Hello, thank you so much for inviting me to this conference. I'm so sorry that I can't be there in person. My name is Samantha Burdett, and I'm the coordinator for the Calgary Local Immigration Partnership. We're located in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, right beside the Rocky Mountains. And our mission is to work together with newcomers to connect, collaborate, and, con and contribute for shared prosperity. So I'm going to share my screen with you. I have some slides. So bear with me for just a second. So Canada has a population of 37.6 million people and immigration is key to growing our economy and maintaining a high standard of living in Canada. Each year we accept over 300,000 immigrants to settle in Canada. In the last national census, just over 21% of the Canadian population was born outside of the country. People come to Canada through three main pathways as an economic immigrant, as a sponsored family class immigrant, or as a refugee. As you can see, Canada now accepts roughly 50,000 refugees each year. These are refugees who have formally been approved by the UNHCR. And once they land in Canada, they immediately receive permanent resident status, which gives them the majority of the same rights and responsibilities of other Canadians. Canada is unique uh, in this regard. The right to vote, work in certain fields, and to hold a Canadian passport are reserved for Canadian citizens, however. Canada historically has low numbers of refugee claimants, people who arrive at the border and claim refugee status, compared to countries in Europe especially. And that's largely due to our geography, but also because of an existing third country agreement we have with the U.S. And ironically, uh, it's that relationship with the U.S. which is actually increasing the numbers of irregular arrivals we're seeing to Canada. Um, for the first time, we're seeing increases uh, at the Canadian border with the U.S. Those numbers have increased largely due to political unrest and instability in the U.S. In 2019, 16,000 people sought asylum at a Canadian border. Just a quick uh, word about terminology. For the most part, uh, in everyday society in Canada, we don't differentiate between Canadians, uh, but legally there are differences. Anyone not born in Canada is an immigrant, so that includes people like me who came to Canada as a child, I've been educated here, I sound Canadian, I am a Canadian citizen, but I was born somewhere else. Newcomers are immigrants who arrived in the last five years, and most services for immigrants that are funded by different levels of government, like language classes, are aimed at this group. A permanent resident is someone who has officially immigrated to Canada, but has not yet been granted citizenship. They receive a permanent residency card upon arrival. Most of those are valid for five years, and they must maintain residency during that period in order to renew it. A Canadian citizen is someone who was born in Canada or someone who has applied and been granted Canadian citizenship after meeting residency requires requirements. That's a minimum of three years and writing a formal exam. Express Entry is the online system used by those who want to immigrate to Canada. It's points-based and prioritizes those who are young, well-educated, have worked in occupations needed in Canada, and who can speak English and or French. Individuals coming through this system make up the majority of immigrants to Canada. So why does uh, Canada have such a big immigration system. We have an aging population. Our fertility rate is very low at 1.6. Our population is aging. For the first time ever in the last census, the number of seniors, people over the age of 65, outnumbered the number of young people under the age of 14. We also have a skills shortage, especially in fields like IT. We need to attract the best and the brightest from around the world to bring their skills, their education, and their global networks to spur innovation and diversity in the Canadian economy, and to contribute to building diverse and vibrant communities that we all want to live in. The need for immigration is not an issue that's debated by the majority in Canada, but we do have political conversations about how many people to bring in and where they should settle. In Calgary, where I live, nearly a third of the population was not born in Canada. 
Calgary is the fourth most popular destination in Canada for immigrants, with the vast majority of arrivals uh, coming as economic immigrants. A very small number are non-permanent residents, about 27,000, and this number includes international students, temporary workers, and people who are on visitor visas. Calgary has a population of 1.5 million, just to give you a bit of perspective. In terms of countries of origin, where people are coming from, the top three countries are the Philippines, India, and China. The top languages spoken at home, other than English or French, are Tagalog, Punjabi, and Mandarin. The next census is in 2021, next year, and we expect to see Arabic in the top languages spoken at home, and possibly Amharic and Tigrinya. We're seeing a lot of arrivals over the last few years in Calgary from Syria, Nigeria, and countries in East Africa. As you can see, immigrants have much higher levels of post-secondary education than Canadian-born, and the vast majority speak either English or French. This again is tied to the fact that we recruit highly skilled, well-educated immigrants who speak English and French to immigrate to Canada. So what are uh, local immigration partnerships? What is CLIP? Uh, it's a whole community approach, and the ultimate goal of LIPS is to help immigrants settle into communities faster and more effectively so that they can contribute to building a vibrant economy and healthy, inclusive communities. Local, local immigration partnerships began as a pilot between the federal government and the province of Ontario in 2008. It was felt that immigrants live in local communities, and so it made sense that local governments and local agencies should have a say in how they support immigrants as they settle. In 2014, the program expanded beyond Ontario, and there are now over 90 LIPs across Canada. Each is slightly different in focus, but most share a common structure, and all share common outcomes as defined by the federal government. All receive core funding from the federal government, which is largely for a staff, uh, two or three people usually, plus a small budget for research, outreach, and community engagement. We're also encouraged to look for additional funding for special products. Oops, sorry. The key role of a LIP is to convene community leaders from diverse sectors to oversee the creation of a strategic plan that supports immigrants to settle and integrate. LIPs conduct local research, facilitate community conversations, Network and convene stakeholders, and that's to identify systems gaps. What's not working? And if there's something that's not working in the system, how do we come together as a community collaborative to find innovative solutions to filling those gaps? Again, at that community level. LIPS aim to ensure that mainstream organizations are including the needs of newcomers in their programs and services, and that they know about the specialized programmings that government funds for newcomers, and that settlement agencies know about the programs and services offered by mainstream organizations, again, so that newcomers get the right services and, they, and supports that they need as they build their lives in Calgary. So how does CLIP work? CLIP is made up of 120 community partners. All are volunteers uh, who volunteer their time, most in their professional capacities, but some are individual community members who just want to support the integration of newcomers in Calgary. So we've got a few of our volunteers here in the photos. The senior leaders in the community representing 20 uh, different sectors sit on the governing body or what we call the CLIP Council. This is the group that oversees the development and implementation of our local strategic plan and the CLIP Action Plan. The strategic plan has the following objectives. To create a community that is welcoming and inclusive, and to support economic, social, cultural, and civic political integration of newcomers living in Calgary. The CLIP working groups were set up to implement the plan, and they mirror the five priorities identified by the community. One is economic well-being with things like financial literacy, employment, making the labor market in Calgary more equitable for immigrants to enter and participate, language, fostering language proficiency for newcomers, social capital, things like civic engagement, volunteering in the community, networking, and social inclusion. And that's about fostering active and meaningful connections between immigrants and the host community. We also have something called the Immigrant Advisory Table. And this group provides that first-hand experience and insight on living as an immigrant in Calgary. 
This expertise is used to inform and support our strategic and action planning. And we also have a very small staff group, as I mentioned earlier. There's two full-time positions, uh, me as the coordinator. We also have a community liaison position. And we have a half-time research analyst who supports our work um, with research. In terms of strategy development, in developing our first strategic plan, CLIP conducted primary research and engaged in extensive community consultations to identify priorities. We also referenced the work of other LIPs across Canada to learn what others have done. We surveyed the strategic plans of CLIP Council member organizations, and we sought and acted on the advice and guidance of CLIP Council and immigrant advisory table members. Having data at the local level is critically important for all LIPs. We can't make local plans without knowing what matters to our local communities and also understanding the local economic and social situation of immigrants. CLIP received funding from the federal government and uh, from a local funder to administer two citywide surveys in 2017. We worked with City of Calgary research staff to create, administer, and analyze the survey. We'll be replicating these in early 2021. We also work closely with local university academics on projects like the Profile of Immigrant Health. We co-authored a study with a local sociology professor who had some external funding to analyze the data set of a national survey on health. This provided us with local data on immigrant health in Calgary and allowed us to compare immigrant health with Canadian born. The national census data provides a wealth of information by gathering all the immigration related data in one place and having it available at the local level is time consuming and requires a certain level of data expertise that not all LIPS have. So in 2018, the federal government gave CLIP some additional funding to allow us to build a national online dashboard of immigration data specific to the needs of local immigration partnerships. It includes two census periods at the moment so that trends can be identified and it'll be expanded to include data from the 2021 census when that came available. And you can actually have a look at that at lipdata.ca, that's publicly available. We're currently conducting an evaluation of our first action plan and we'll be doing community consultations this autumn to determine priorities for our new action plan. We use a combination of collective impact and results-based accountability as our evaluation framework. We survey CLIP members annually to see how we're doing as a collaborative entity. And in terms of the work that we do, we ask questions like, how much did we do? How well did you do it? And is anyone better off? That last question is always the hardest to measure. Due to COVID and the uncertainty that has brought in all aspects of life at the moment, our next action plan will be a one-year plan. Already, we're anticipating a shift in our focus as we have identified emerging issues already. How we address these and how we balance the work will be part of that priority setting we do with our community partners and our stakeholders. So that's it for me. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to uh, be with you today uh, and to share some of the work that we're doing in Calgary. Uh, uh, the organizers have my contact information. If anybody does want to get in touch, please don't hesitate to. Thank you so much.